my channel. My name is Erica and today's video is episode five of my makeup and artist series and I am super excited to be bringing you this video because I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite musical artists to ever sing, dance, or live, Janet Jackson. Now, I have been a huge Janet Jackson fan since I can remember. I got really into her music, I think when I was like in the sixth grade, so like 11 years old, that was when the album Control came out and I completely lost my mind and have been a fan of hers ever since. But I was a fan of hers even before that because she was acting and so I have a ton of information I'll be giving you guys today in this video about Janet Jackson. And I wasn't sure what palette to create my eye look with as I chat with you guys about Janet Jackson. So I started looking at her album covers. And one of the album covers that just stuck out the most to me is the album cover to the album Velvet Rope. And I'll pop a picture of the album cover here so you guys can see what it looks like if you're not familiar. I just love like her hair and like the red and black, you know, kind of juxtapositioning off each other, if that's even a word. So I started looking through my palettes and I grabbed this one here. This is the Martine Cosmetics 669 palette. And this is one of my favorite palettes in my collection. I don't use it nearly enough, but I felt like this color story would be perfect for a look based on the Velvet Rope uh, album cover. Because of course we have the red and black and then this shade right here, no, no, this shade right here <laughs> called uh, Euf Euphenia, Euphenia is this really pretty red and like kind of like bronzy, or gold almost, shifty shade, and I thought that would be perfect for the look. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna be focusing on. Uh, is this shade right here called Petula? This one here called Annabelle. And then I might even put either Cornelia or Helena in this look as well. And I might even put a little bit of Hildegard too, maybe to blend this shade out with. We'll see as I get into the look. So I will be doing both eyes on camera today. Both my brows are done and both eyelids are primed in the P. Louise eyeshadow base in Rumor 01. So I think what I will do initially, I'm trying to decide, I think I will start off with Hildegard first and putting that in my like transition area. And then I'll go into the other shades, of course, but I do need to get a brush for this. So Janet Demita Jo Jackson was born on May 16th, 1966 in Gary, Indiana. And she is the youngest of her 10, or all 10 kids. Uh, she has two sisters named Rebby and Latoya. And then her brothers are Jackie, Tito, Jermaine, Marlon, Randy, and Michael. And Marlon did have a twin uh, named Brandon, who sadly passed away not long after his birth. Uh, the family were devout uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, but as Janet aged, got older, uh, she pulled away from the Jehovah's Witness faith and apparently is not really involved in any type of organized religion. At age seven, Janet started to perform with her sisters at the MGM Casino on the Las Vegas Strip. And in 1976, she began acting in the variety show, The Jacksons. Now her father, uh, Joe, was her manager, uh, but apparently was not very kind to her, it was very distant and very cold with her and actually had her address him by his first name rather than dad. She would have to call him Joe, which I didn't realize that. I mean, I, I knew that he was kind of a tough guy, uh, not the kindest to his children, but I didn't realize it was, you know, to that extent at that early of an age for her. Now her acting in the variety show, The Jacksons, was very well received and around, I think she was between eight or nine, she landed the role of Penny Gordon Woods on the sitcom Good Times. I love that show. JJ loved it. Dynamite, such a great show. And I can remember as a kid, you know, watching that show and just loving her. And, you know, as I grew up, I would watch the reruns and just very impressed with her acting as a young girl. I mean, she was she was really good, really, really good. Later on, she starred in A New Kind of Family. And after that, she got a recurring role on Different Strokes as Charlene Dupree. And I remember that, too. I think she was Willis's girlfriend. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Todd Bridges played Willis. And I just loved her. I thought she was beautiful and fun and, you know, she's kind of soft-spoken, and I don't know, I just thought she was the coolest ever. I wanted to be just like her. 
So when she was 15, her father, her manager father, set up a contract for her with a and Records. And in 1982, she released her first album called Janet Jackson. Now, I don't know that I listened to that at that point. I may have, I just don't remember that. This album peaked at number 63 on the Billboard 200 and was number six on the R&B chart. And it really wasn't given a whole lot of attention or promotion, that album. So the fact that it peaked as high as it did and ranked as high as it did was really saying something about her talent, her musical prowess. In 1984, she released her second album called Dream Street, and that reached number 147 on the Billboard 200 and number 19 on the R&B chart. Now, both of these albums consisted of primarily kind of like bubblegum pop type music which she wasn't really a huge fan of, but her father was very much in control of what kind of music uh, she was creating at that point. And uh, as time went on, she just kind of felt like that really wasn't the type of music she wanted to be creating. So after that second album was released, she made a decision to part ways with her father being her manager. She, she kind of, from what I read, kind of started really pulling away from the family in general. She just, she wanted to make her own way in the music world. She didn't want to be constantly compared to her brothers. Uh, she just really did not want her father having any control over her, uh, you know, recordings and the type of music that she was making. So yeah, she cut ties with him as her manager. I think what I'm gonna do actually now is go in with this brush and just kind of take the edge of that down because it's getting a little harsh. So in 1986, she teamed up with producers Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and released her third album, which was called Control. Now that's when I really discovered Janet Jackson and I absolutely lost my mind over that album. It had the songs Nasty, which is one of my all-time favorite Janet Jackson songs. I still listen to that song quite often. Uh, it also had What Have You Done For Me Lately, which is another one of my favorite songs of hers. It had When I Think Of You, uh, You Could Be Mine. It also had the song Pleasure Principle and Let's Wait A While. And all of that, that, that entire album was just so good. All of the songs, all of the lyrics, just amazing. And that was also when she became huge on MTV. You know, all of the videos that she produced or that she created for those songs were on MTV constantly. And she also, of course, was an amazing dancer. And so people were really starting to see just how talented she was, not only musically, but with her dancing as well. And I will never forget, uh, my friends and I would be at my house uh, we would record her videos off of MTV and then we would try to uh, learn the dances like we'd slow them down or pause them and <laughs> it was so fun. I love that. Like that's one of my favorite memories of my childhood is learning Janet Jackson dances in my living room. Now I'm going to go into the shade here called Petula and put that in my outer V into my crease. Now this album shot to number one on the Billboard 200 and was certified five fold platinum selling over 10 million copies worldwide. And that does not surprise me at all. I mean, that album just, like I mentioned several times now, was just, is it my favorite album she's ever done? I don't know, that's that's tough to say. I don't know that I can pick a favorite Janet Jackson album, uh, but it was definitely up there for sure. If not my favorite, maybe my second favorite? I don't know. But, you know, she was just, all over the place at that point. You know, like everybody knew who she was. Uh, you know, like I mentioned, MTV was playing her uh, videos constantly. The, she was on the radio constantly and was just building this huge fan base at that point, huge. And also, you know, her lyrics were very different than her first two albums. You know, they were a lot more, uh, I don't know, edgy maybe. And I think a lot more relatable for young women, especially young black women. And, uh, you know, just being very independent and very strong and very, you know, comfortable in her own skin and just, you know, really providing this amazing example to follow. It was really cool. And, you know, that album also kind of helped her shake off being in the shadow of her brothers, you know, because her brothers were so popular, especially Michael, of course. And so, you know, she was able to have her own success and her own fame and her, her own power, her own control 
uh, for herself and was not just, you know, kind of riding the coattails of her older brothers. Now in 1989, Janet Jackson released her fourth album, which was Rhythm Nation 1814. And I was a freshman in high school when that album came out. And again, here we have this incredible album with amazing music, amazing lyrics. You know, you could dance to her music. And of course, she also released all of these awesome videos. Rhythm Nation is one of my favorite videos ever. And again, I had all my friends at my house or I was at friends' houses and we were trying to recreate her dances. Uh, not very well, but we still were. And, you know, again, I just fell madly in love with her all over again with that album. That, of course, had Rhythm Nation. It also had Miss You Much, uh, Escapade, Love Will Never Do Without You. Um, I'm trying to remember all the other songs. I wrote them all down. Uh, State of the World, All Right, Come Back to Me, Black Cat, and The Knowledge. Now, this album really dealt with a lot of social issues. You know, that was something that she really wanted to bring forth in her music, talking about, you know, illiteracy, uh, domestic violence, um, racism. Uh, you know, it was, they were very deep lyrics. And, you know, the cool thing about it was that, you know, of course they were very deep lyrics and the music was so uh, amazing that it like, you know, it's this really cool mix of like social justice type lyrics, but then also, you know, music that you could dance to. So it was just a very unique album at, at that time. Nobody had really released an album quite like that before. And uh, that album, let's see, peaked at number one on the Billboard 200 and was certified six-fold platinum and sold over 12 million copies worldwide. <laughs> and like I said, you know, I just lost my mind over that entire album. Uh, I had, the see, Control I had on tape. I think actually Rhythm Nation I had on tape too. And I mean, that was all I was listening to, you know, from like six, well, not all, but primarily, you know, it's a lot of what I was listening to is the Janet Jackson tapes that I had from sixth grade all the way through like my sophomore, junior year of high school, you know? And even at our school dances, you know, her music would always be played and we would all try to mimic her dance routines from her videos. And also just, you know, listening to these amazing lyrics that really showed like how, you know, aware she was of just the world and where she fit in in the world and where, you know, black youth fit into the world and, and just really bringing to light a lot of issues that, you know, black, young black uh people were facing at that time, you know, and, and really shining a light on it and not just, you know, making light of it or not discussing it. You know, she really brought a lot of very uh, important issues into the light, which I thought was just awesome. I just love that. Also, the video to Rhythm Nation is one of the most watched videos, the most iconic and most watched videos in MTV history, which I'm not surprised. And I was probably one of the people that made it that way because <laughs> I watched that video so many freaking times. Oh my God. I love how these two are playing together. That looks really cool, but I do want to deepen this up. So I think what I'll do, I'm trying to decide if I want to go into Mercury or Annabelle. I think actually instead of this one for now, I'm going to go into this one first. This is just a little lighter than that. It's like a kind of a charcoal gray versus like the true black matte. Also, uh, her 1990 Rhythm Nation tour uh, became the most successful debut tour in the history of music. So, you know, she's just kicking ass. Kicking ass, taking names, everybody get out of her way. She's coming for you. And, you know, she was only 23 years old. You know, so to be 23 years old... Uh, and to be like basically at this point like almost kind of like surpassing her brother's success i mean that was pretty badass you know and uh i'm just so proud of that you know i'm so proud that she was able to i mean of course you know having her brothers didn't didn't hurt her but it also didn't hinder her you know what i mean like she was able to grab hold of her own success and just keep on trucking which i love uh in 1991 she fulfilled her contract with a m Records and then signed with Virgin Records and was given a multi-million dollar contract. And at that point, 
that particular contract and also just her success uh, earned her the nickname the Queen of Pop. Uh, she also did some fun kind of side projects too around that time, like in 1992. Uh, she released the song Best Things in Life Are Free that she did with Luther Vandross. And that was in the movie Mo Money with uh, was Damon Wayans. Was Keenan Ivory Wayans in that too or just Damon Wayans? But I love that movie. That was such a great movie. And I loved that song. I had the single tape of that song and I played it so much that it broke. Now in May of 1993, she released her fifth studio album, which was called Janet. And again, here we have this amazing album, another amazing album with the most amazing songs and amazing videos. That album had the songs, That's the Way Love Goes, which again is one of my favorite Janet Jackson songs. It also had If, which that video blew my mind. That was another one that my friends and I all tried to learn and <laughs> do it like the dance. Cause at that point I had graduated from high school and had gone into college. And so we were going to like, you know, dance clubs and stuff. We, you know, under, well, 18 and under dance clubs, but still, I mean, we were just having so much fun with that and trying to reenact her video, her dance moves in the <laughs> video if but, oh man, such a great album. That also had Anytime, Anyplace, and Again. Now, this album, uh, well, the song, That's the Way Love Goes, won the Grammy for Best R&B Song and was number one for eight consecutive weeks. Again, the song reached uh, number one for two weeks. Anytime, Anyplace went to number four, as did If, and Because of Love and You Want This, which is another one of my favorite songs, charted in the top 10. Now, this also opened, this album opened at number one on the Billboard 200 and went certified six-fold platinum, which, did I say that about the Rhythm Nation album too? Both of them went certified six-fold platinum. Hello. So, you know, she's just kicking ass. You know, just album after album, hit after hit, amazing video after amazing video. You know, she was just on top of the world. So I will go back in with the Petula shade and just kind of blend out the darker gray matte. And I would say that the album Janet was well, maybe a little bit of a sexier uh, album for her to release, you know? Definitely showed her sexy side, her feminine side, you know, definitely, but also, you know, the strong, the sexy and strong aspect of Janet Jackson, which that was very appealing to me. Like, I just thought that was so awesome that she was so sexy, but yet so strong and so fierce. You know, such an amazing example to, you know, try to emulate at that point in my life. Absolutely. Uh, she also, uh, in 1993, starred in the movie Poetic Justice with Tupac Shakur. And that movie also had the song Again in it. And the song Again was actually written for that film. And it received a Golden Globe and an Academy Award nomination for Best Original Song. Now, in September of 1993, she also appeared topless on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. But her husband at the time, Rene Elizondo Jr., uh, his hands were covering her breasts. And I thought that was one of the most beautiful pictures I'd ever seen on the cover of a magazine. I just thought that was amazing. Just so beautiful and such a, I don't know, just really captured her, you know, how beautiful she was and how sexy she was. And I just loved that uh, magazine cover. I thought that was so awesome. Okay, I'm loving this. So now let's go into some shimmers. I think what I will do, I think I'm just gonna put this Cornelia shade right here, you know, obviously on both lids. And then I'm gonna put the Euph Euphenia, is that how you say that? Euphenia shade towards the front part of the lid. In 1995, she actually collaborated with her brother Michael and released the song Scream. And that was a part of his history album. And, you know, the, the main premise of that song was just the media scrutiny that they were both under. You know, the Jackson family has been under a lot of media scrutiny. And, you know, he was dealing with allegations of child molestation and, and things of that nature. And, you know, she was very, very supportive of her brother. Um, 
And so they, they released the song and the video was amazing. And they were dancing together again, just the choreography, another video where her choreography was just off the chain, you know, just amazing. And that became one of my, of course, one of my favorite songs. Just love the song Scream. Uh, I did have the History album and of course listened to on, on CD and of course listened to that until it practically broke in half. Uh, in 1996, she released her first compilation album, which was called Design of a Decade, 1986 through 1996. And of course I had to buy that on CD and listen to that constantly. That also had a new song called Runaway, which is another one of my favorite Janet Jackson songs ever. Now this single actually became the first song by a female artist to debut within the top 10 of the Hot 100. And this, this album, The Design of a Decade, went certified double platinum, which kind of surprises me that it was only double platinum. Cause I mean, everybody that I knew had that album and we were all listening to it, you know? And I can also remember, you know, like, uh, going to like basketball games or football games and like the cheerleaders or the dance team or whatever would always be performing to songs from the design of a decade. That's what it's called? Yeah. Design of a decade album. You know, just, it was just huge. So it kind of surprises me that it wasn't, it didn't do better than that. You know, I feel like it should have done as exactly the same as her other albums did. And the same year in 1996, she renewed her contract with Virgin records to the tune of 80, million dollars which at that point in time that was the most lucrative contract of any musical artist ever male or female didn't matter that was the most lucrative lucrative contract anyone any musical artist had ever landed themselves so you know here we go she's just like i said she's just kicking ass and taking names love it now in 1997 she released the album velvet rope which i'm basing my look on and at that point in time, uh, Janet was suffering from pretty severe depression. And so a lot of the songs that she wrote were, you know, a little moodier than maybe her past songs. Um, she, you know, really dealt with a lot of, uh, you know, different issues in that album than she had dealt with before. Um, same, same sex relationships, um, some, I guess some more songs about domestic violence too, homophobia, sadomasochism, just dealing with more mature subject matter. And, you know, some of the songs on that album were, like I mentioned, were just a little maybe darker, a little moodier. That had the song, uh, Got Till It's Gone. You don't know what you got till it's gone. That's one of my favorite Janet Jackson songs. And that featured, uh, singing from Joni, Joni Mitchell, who is, you know, I grew up listening to Joni Mitchell, my mom did for sure. And also uh, had Q-Tip, the rapper in it as well. And I was a huge, I still am huge Q-Tip fan. That was such a great song. And you know, her look changed. She, you know, her videos, she was having like, you know, her hair was different. Uh, she had piercings and tattoos, you know, just very, you know, just, she was maturing. You know, she was in her mid to late twenties at that point and just, you know, just that's something that I, I really loved about her is as she evolved as an artist, so did her music, you know, it kind of changed with her and it kind of reflected some of the things that she was going through in various times of her life. And I felt like that made her very relatable. Just the things that she would like share in her songs and I don't know, like I was watching her in interviews and things like that. And I just felt this like very deep bond to her. For some reason i don't know i just really did she just i don't know i felt like i just like synced with her or something i don't know if that makes any sense but that's how i felt about her the album velvet rope also had the song together again uh that became her eighth number one hit on the billboard hot 100. Uh, this also spent 46 weeks on the hot 100 and 19 weeks on the uk singles chart uh this also had the songs i get lonely go deep which is another one of my favorite songs from her, Every Time, Free Zone, and Tonight's the Night. There was also an HBO special of The Velvet Rope in Madison Square Garden, and there were 15 million viewers that tuned into that on HBO. So again, here we have all of this amazing success, and, you know, it's like she's just really getting all this attention and all these accolades that she absolutely deserved. You know, so proud of her for all of the success that she's had. 
amazing. In July of 2000, she appeared in her second film, which was Nutty Professor 2, The Clumps, which I loved her in that movie. Uh, this also had a soundtrack to it, of course, which featured the song Doesn't Really Matter that was played in that movie. And that is another one. I mean, all of, I keep saying that with every song. All of her songs are just, you know, some of my favorites, but I love Doesn't Really Matter. And I thought she did a great job in the movie Nutty Professor 2. I thought she was awesome. In April of 2001, she released her seventh album, which was All For You. And that song, All For You, oh, so good. The video is so good. Oh my gosh, such an amazing, another amazing album with, you know, again, amazing videos. I mean, you know, she just, she could not do anything wrong ever you know what i mean like everything she did was just golden it was amazing and at this point she was labeled the queen of radio by mtv and abs of freaking lutely and i you know i remember you know from the time control was released all through i mean even now even now when i listen to the radio quite often janet jackson songs are played on the radio still and i just love that uh the song all for you also earned her a grammy what was it for? Grammy Award for Best Dance Recording. Yes, absolutely. Now, in February of 2004 was when she and Justin Timberlake performed together at the Super Bowl. And that was the infamous breast exposure that everybody made a huge deal out of. You know, and people said that they did that on purpose and that they knew that that was what was going to happen. And, and that's, according to her and Justin, that's not what was meant to happen that, you know, he was just supposed to rip off part of the bustier and then it was, you know, her breast was supposed to be covered by a bra. But, you know, it's a boob. Like, I don't know. I didn't think that was that big of a deal. I remember my mom being so annoyed that, you know, the media and everything made such a huge deal out of it. I mean, I realize kids are watching and, you know, but it was for like two seconds. I mean, you know, I don't know. I just thought that was ridiculous. I didn't think they need to make such a big deal out of it. Um, and, you know, the thing is, is that that year also, was the 46th, uh, 46th Grammy Awards and Justin Timberlake got invited and Janet Jackson did not because she got basically blacklisted for, you know, exposing her or him exposing her breasts, but he gets to come and she doesn't, you know, again, here we have that predominant theme in the world where, you know, the man, it's like, oh, it's no big deal, but the woman gets punished for, I don't know, just so ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And, you know, fortunately, there there was some, you know, uh, criticism of how she was treated, thank goodness. But, you know, still, m more so, she was criticized for what happened at the Super Bowl. And, you know, my husband and I were just talking about that. And he was like, I just never understood why they made such a big deal out of it. I'm like, I don't either. So what? Her boob showed for, you know, half a second. Big deal. Uh, I do really like how this look looks. It's very dark and moody, but I don't like this edge. So I think what I'll do is grab, if I can find it, I think it's actually over here. Yeah, I'm going to grab my e.l.f. contour palette and go around the edge of this shade with this shade right here, like I typically do. And in March of 2004, her eighth studio album, Demita Joe, was released. And this album was actually expected to outsell All For You, but of course, this was coming off the tail of the whole Super Bowl thing. And so that album did not do as well as they had anticipated it would do uh, because of that, which I just think is, again, another example of just sheer ridiculousness. Absolutely ridiculous. You know, and I, I think about other artists who have shown way more than that in videos or on TV or whatever that did not get the bashing that she got and it just you know really angers me but that album uh Demita Joe had the song all night on it I'm gonna link of course tons of Janet Jackson songs in my description box and if you have not heard the song all night which I can't imagine that you haven't if you're a Janet Jackson fan that is such a good song and that, that's a song I listen to quite often I actually just listened to that on my way home from work yesterday I think yeah I mean, when I do these types of videos, I get really sucked into the artist's songs. Like I just got done listening to a bunch of Billy Idol songs. Now I'm into Janet Jackson music, you know? Absolutely. I was listening to New Edition, you know, just, it's so fun to just go back down memory lane 
and listen to all these amazing songs from these artists that I've covered so far. It's really fun. And I really like this. The thing about this shade here is that you can't really see how duochromy it is, I don't think, in the camera, but I can definitely see it in the mirror. It's awesome. Okay, so I <laughs> put my concealer on down here and started doing my lower lash lines and didn't realize I did not hit record. So uh, basically, I just started going into this shade right here and putting it in my outer uh, outer part of my lower lash lines or my the last half of my lower lash line. Jeez. I was like, did I not hit record? No, I did not hit record. So let me back up and give you a few more facts about Janet here. In 2005, she released her ninth album, 20YO, which had mixed reviews, which I don't remember that album for some reason. Uh, in 2007, she was in Tyler Perry's movie, Why Did I Get Married? And that opened at number one at the box office and grossed $60 million. Hello. Uh, in 2008, she released her 10th studio album, which was called Discipline, and that had the song Feedback on it, which again, <laughs> for the 900th time, is one of my favorite Janet Jackson songs. Love it. Love the video. So amazing. And that song peaked at number 19 on the top 100 charts. In 2009, she released her second hits compilation that was called Number Ones. Uh, and she performed a tribute to her brother, Michael, by performing Scream at the MTV Music Awards. And I do remember that. I watched that and was very emotional about that. Um, and I do have that second compilation album and it's in a, like, I don't know, one of those big CD cases that my daughter has that I really want to get back from her because it's got all of my really good um, CDs in it. <laughs> She's like, I don't know that I'm going to give it back to you, Mom. I'm like, well, you will because I have to have it back. And I'm not putting eyeliner in my lower water lines for a while because I was, I'm was i getting some kind of weird reactions to that. So I'm not doing that today. Now I'm going to go into the shade here called Petula and put that towards the front part of my lower lash lines. In 2010, she was in another Tyler Perry movie, kind of a sequel, I guess, uh, to Why Did I Get Married? This one was called Why Did I Get Married 2? And I don't know that I've seen either one of those movies, which shocks me because usually if Janet Jackson does anything, I watch it and love it. And so I'm going to have to track those movies down and watch them because I love Tyler Perry movies and I love Janet Jackson so I don't I don't know that's weird to me that I have never watched those um in 2019 uh she had a four-month Las Vegas residency called Metamorphosis at the MGM Resort which I did not know that so that's really cool uh in 2022 there was a two-part documentary about her released on Lifetime and also on A&E which I am pretty sure I watched that. I want to say that I did watch that. Didn't I? I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure I did. I, I also think, wasn't there a behind the music about her on um, VH1? There had to have been. And I'm, I know I watched that. I, I, I know I've watched some documentary about Janet Jackson. I just can't remember which one I watched. And now what I think I'm going to do is grab this brush here. Get the hair off it. Grab this brush here and I'm going to go into this shade here called Hildegard and just kind of blow out the lower lash line, make that a little bit smokier looking. Um, just to give you a little bit of information about her personal life, um, at age 18, she eloped with singer James DeBarge, uh, which, you know, that was pretty hush hush. They didn't really uh, go into a, you know, I don't think anybody really knew that at the time other than like, you know, I'm, I'm sure her family. Uh, and I think part of that was just because, uh, you know, she had such a contemptuous relationship with her dad that I think she just kind of wanted to, I don't know, that was kind of her way, I think, of rebelling. And, you know, she was, they were very much in love with each other. But I think, you know, just from what I read about her, you know, she had just kind of had enough of dealing with her dad's control. And I think that was a huge way of like, again, trying to pull away from him. And that was in September of 1984 when they eloped. And by 1985, the marriage had been annulled. Uh, and then in 1986, I think it was, yeah, she began dating dancer and songwriter and director Rene Elizondo Jr., which was his hands were over her breasts in the uh, Rolling, on the Rolling Stone magazine cover. And they married in secret. I, and I don't really understand why. I don't know. I mean, that I wasn't really able to, you know, glean from the information that I read about her, why that was 
done in secret. I don't know if that had, again, had something to do with her dad and family, the whole situation. I don't know. Uh, but they were married in 1991, uh, and the union was kept secret until the divorce went public in 2003. So I, I do remember hearing about the divorce and going, oh, they were married? I didn't, had no idea. Uh, and then in, from 2002 to 2009, she dated music producer, rapper, and songwriter J Jermaine Dupree. And I, you know, I do remember them dating. Uh, and, you know, didn't really, I mean, you know, was just wanted her to be happy. You know, that was, I, as long as she was happy, I was happy for her. And then in 2010, she began dating a businessman, Wassam Almana. They married privately in 2012. Uh, she gave birth to their son in 2017, and uh, it sounds like a few months later, they were separated, and I think, are they divorced now? That wasn't made clear in the information that I was reading about her, whether or not they're actually divorced now or not. I think they could just still be separated. I'm not sure, and I'm getting a ton of fallout that I need to clean up. <laughs> Ipsy. And I did get a little bit of this shade in my eye, which did not feel very good when I went off camera. I got some of that out of my eye and that did not feel good. This is getting a little too blown out maybe. A little too smoky. I don't know. I do like how it looks. I do though want to grab a little bit more of the Petula shade. Put a little bit more of this back up here. But you know I just have to say, just reiterate one more time before I go off camera to do the rest of my face, that I just adore her, worship her. I mean I really do. And I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit that. I just think Janet Jackson is such a brilliant musician, brilliant songwriter, brilliant dancer, just such an amazing woman in the music industry, you know? And I, I feel so fortunate that I, you know, I've always been basically, I guess, you know, since I was 11, uh, lifelong, I will, I will consider that a lifelong fan of Janet Jackson because she's just so awesome. And I have so many memories of her music throughout my life, you know, and just will treasure those memories forever, forever and ever. So I think I'm pretty much done. So I will go off camera, do the rest of my face, and I will come back. So of course, this is the finished look, and I really like how it turned out. I love that eyeshadow palette. I just wanted to grab something out of my collection that I felt would give me a smokier, vampier, sexier look for my tribute to Janet Jackson, and I definitely feel like that palette did that for me for my eye look today. So I'll show you the palette again, but let me show you just a few things I put on my face for my finished look. Uh, for my mascara, I used the Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effects Mascara, one of my faves. I did use my Wet n Wild Breakup Proof Waterproof Liquid Liner or Felt Tip Liner in black on my upper lids today. And then on my lips, I used the Colored Rain Lip Lacquer in the shade Cherry Blossom. And this has become my favorite red lip product that I have in my collection. It's such a cool formula because it's got the lasting power of a liquid lipstick. I think I've mentioned this before, but it's glossy. It's just amazing and it feels really nice on the lips. It's not gooey or sticky. I just love it. So now let's talk about the palette, Martine Cosmetics 669 palette. Oh, I love this. And I just felt like this was the perfect color story to pull in for a video about Janet Jackson, the vampy, the sexy, some grunge in this too. Loved all the shades that I used for this look. And I, I know the colors aren't exactly like the colors in the Velvet Rope album cover, but still, you know, I think I did a decent job of kind of trying to stick to that color scheme. Uh, the mattes I used uh, blended really well, very pigmented, lovely, and the shimmers that I used are really fun. It's just too bad that this shift doesn't really show up in the camera, I don't think, very well. And this shade is really nice, although there is some fallout to this shade. It's got kind of that like chunky, like not glittery, but just kind of chunky fallout that I did have to kind of clean off my face. But you know, all in all, I just love this palette and really enjoyed the look that I put together. It's, you know, a little deeper, darker, smokier than I normally do, but really fun to be able to put a look like this together with this palette. And I do think it matches Janet Jackson very well. I just think that Janet is one of the most amazing and talented musical artists to ever sing, dance, do, do anything in the music industry. I just adore her. And her music has been such a huge part of my life for the majority of my life. I have so many amazing memories of her songs, her videos, you know, like 
really, my friends and I tried our hardest to recreate all of the choreography we would see in Janet Jackson's videos. And, you know, I just, I wanted to do something, you know, with my look that was as sexy and as vampy as she is. I don't think I got anywhere close to that, but I tried. I did try. Now, let me know what your memories of Janet Jackson are in the comment section. What are your favorite songs of hers? I mean, like I said throughout the video, all of her songs are my favorites. I just think she's so amazing. And I just want to have a big love fest for Janet Jackson in the comment section. And uh, episode six will be coming uh, maybe towards the end of this month because I kind of missed March. This was supposed to be coming up in March, but uh, kind of ran out of time. So I think I will be trying to get another artist. I, well, actually, it's going to be a group, and I know who it is already, uh, by the end of this month. But I'm just really enjoying doing this series. It's so fun to share my love for various musical artists with you guys. I love it. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your lives to sit down and watch this video. If you're new here and you enjoyed what you saw, please consider subscribing, smash the like button, and of course, comment down below in the comment section. I love to chat with you guys there. If you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. I cannot wait to see you guys again in my next video. But in the meantime, please take very good care of yourself. Be well, safe, happy, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Drop it.